From time to time, I like to do this video on speeding up Lightroom. There's some things that you could be doing wrong that could be making Lightroom slower and you could do things to make it faster. Or there's some things that you might not even know that could actually improve the performance inside of Lightroom Classic specifically is what we're talking about here. But more than halfway through 2022, Lightroom should not be slow for you. Okay, uh, Adobe's done considerable things in the last three and four years that have improved performance and they're constantly working on it. So I, I know how the internet works. I've been doing this for 20 years. Somebody's gonna write a big long comment on how I'm wrong. So if you're mean about it, I'll delete it by the way. But if you're nice about it, just understand I can't do anything. Nobody else reading it can do anything other than just point you to some of the things in the video here and hopefully uh, that will help out. So as it comes to performance, this first part, we're gonna jump on into Lightroom in a second here, but the first part, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on because I consider it, uh, it's something that you should know. Minimum system requirements. Google it, get to Adobe's website. Google's your best friend here. Figure out what they are. And if you are right at minimum system requirements, you should expect minimum performance, not just in Adobe world, all other software applications on your computer. That's the way it works. From there, hard drives. Uh, the speed of your hard drive matters. So where you have your catalog, whatever computer it's on, I keep it on the same computer as, as Lightroom's on and everything, but where you have your catalog, that matters. And then if, for most people that put their photos on external hard drives, the speed of the hard drive does matter as well. So if you got it on an old, old USB 1.0 drive or an old, 4200 RPM spinning drive, that could impact your performance as well. And then the other thing is always make sure you have at least 20% free space on the hard drive where Lightroom is running because it's swapping things in and out. And if you don't have a lot of free space, if, you're, if you've got a, a one terabyte hard drive and you've used 990 uh, gigabytes of that, be prepared for some slow performance, okay? From there, let's jump over into Lightroom and we'll talk about the rest of the things. First part is gonna be, reviewing your photos, okay? And that all starts with the import. What I really want is a fast way to review photos. The first thing to know is you'll you'll wanna be in the library module for this. And I'm gonna show you when you do your import. Uh, at the top right, you're gonna have these preview options, okay? One of them is embedded in Sidecar, which is the one I recommend to choose. It's the one I use. The only other one that I think is worth talking about is the one-to-one. -one. Remember, this is not an all-encompassing video to explain everything, so I'm just gonna tell you the two that you would probably wanna be concerned with. But we do have the one-to-one -one option. When you choose embedded in Sidecar, here's what I like about it. If I'm in the library module, all right, you're gonna see these little badges in the left-hand corner and you can go to your viewing options and you can change the badges and little things that you see there. But you're gonna see these little badges. If you hover over, it's gonna say embedded preview. This is a JPEG embedded preview that came from the file. All right, it's not the actual raw photo. So when you do go to edit, it could change. But if you stay in the library module to do your photo review, okay, the embedded preview is big enough to fill most of the screen and what you really see is as you hit the right arrow key through the photos, it's it's instantaneous. It will switch between the photos very, very quickly. So I'm just gonna hold down the right arrow key for a second here and you'll see it immediately goes to the end. There's not a lot of photos in there, but if there was 800 photos in there, it would flash through them faster than you could see any of them. So the idea behind that for me is I want, this is where I favor my speed. Okay, I do a lot of wildlife photography. I wanna be able to get through the photos really fast. Where does the embedded one start to lose a little bit of ground? Well, number one, again, it isn't the exact photo. It's a JPEG preview. So it will change if you go to develop. And then on some computers, depending on what you have going on, the size of the photo, all these other factors in there, it could take a second or two to render a full size preview when you go into develop and then when you go to zoom in on the photo, that could even take a second or two or maybe even a few seconds to render that, right? And as you switch photos, that would also take time. For me, I'm okay with that because doing one-to-one -one previews takes up a lot of space on your computer's hard drives and it takes a long time to bring those photos into Lightroom. So I'm okay sacrificing that and doing the embedded in sidecar because it's so much faster to go through them. Just remember, you wanna do that in library. The moment, if you start reviewing your photos in develop, you're gonna be waiting for, for Lightroom to build all of this information on that raw data when you're inside of develop. So that's why you've gotta be in library. And again, I prefer the embedded and sidecar option. Speaking of the embedded and sidecar option, I can think of no better time for a word from our sponsor than when I'm talking about that. I can't even say it with a straight face because it makes no sense. But if you're interested, I have a course called the Lightroom System. 
it is a systematic approach to learning Lightroom from the ground up. So it starts off with organizing your photos before you even get into Lightroom. Because if you're organized, disorganized outside of Lightroom, you will be disorganized inside of Lightroom. So it talks a little bit about that, how to get your photos in, how to develop an advanced develop section, talks a lot about masking, even a whole section on using Lightroom with Photoshop and the workflow that goes along with it, photo books, prints, um, I talk about all the different versions of Lightroom, when, how, why you might want to use those different versions. And then I finish it up with a whole section on catalogs because that's such a big area in Lightroom to understand as well. The best part about it is it is a very systematic approach, but it's blocked out. So it's very easy to just jump in and jump out to the parts that you want. So if you don't want to learn photo books and you don't have to go watch that section and none of the other areas really build upon it. So it's very easy to just plug yourself into the part of the system that you want to learn more about. I hope you'll swing by over to the website to find out a little bit more. Let's get back. Now, moving on from there, let's switch over to some things you can do and just keep in mind inside of the develop area here. So the first thing is be aware that anything you do with your spot removal tool and anything you do with local corrections, all of your masking tools and all that stuff, that's pretty intensive. Okay, so those things take a lot of computer resource power. And the more you do with those, the more the slower things are going to start to get for you. So it's not meant for you to go in here and remove a thousand spots with the spot removal tool. If you're going to do that, take it over into Photoshop. It'll just be faster overall. Same thing with all of your masking tools. Not really meant for you to do hundreds or thousands of adjustments there. And one thing to keep in mind, and I think a lot of people miss this. When I go to take something like the brush and I add a brush here, take a look at your history panel on the left hand side. It's creating a state for every single time that I do that. And all that information is being stored. All that stuff slows down the editing process for your computer. So try to as much as you can. It's not going to be possible all the time, but you, you don't want to just go crazy doing these things. And if you did have a lot of brushing and dodging and burning to do, and you were going to really be spending five to 10 minutes on this process with, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of brush strokes on it, you might want to consider taking that photo into Photoshop and doing all of that dodging and burning inside of there. And then the last thing, Adobe does have a recommended workflow order. I, I personally don't ever follow it, but um, I'm showing it to you. you. You can choose to follow it or not. I've never seen any performance increase or decrease from this. Um, I do know it's good practice just to do your spot removal first because as you layer changes and things on top of it, that can get a little bit quirky. But other than that, I, I don't really follow any specific workflow order. I generally start at the top, work my way down, and if for some reason I end up back at the top again, I don't care. Um, again, it's not something that I have found that really significantly impacts uh, the speed at which you're able to use the develop module. Moving on down the line from the develop, we do have sync. So you're going to see your little sync cloud icon in the top right corner if you've turned this on. And this is syncing to Lightroom up in the cloud. Um, again, we could do a whole tutorial on this, so I don't want to spend too much time on it other than just know if syncing is on, it's taking up resources from your computer, okay? It can slow things down. So for the most part, I don't do a lot of, I don't have to sync a lot of photos back and forth with, with anything there. So for the most part, I just keep that turned off. If you're not using this feature, keep it turned off. If you are using the feature, if you created web galleries, if you've got Lightroom Mobile on your phone and you're syncing collections to it and you're syncing these collections a lot, then you might want to keep it turned on. But if you're not using them often, then go ahead and pause your sync. Now we're going to move up into the catalog and preferences menu. So you'll find them under the edit menu on a PC and under the Lightroom classic menu on a Mac. Uh, if I go to catalog settings, one of the first things is going to be under, I believe it's metadata. And what you don't want to have on is automatically write changes to XMP. That will slow things down. It comes, it's turned off by default. The only reason you would turn this on is if you find that you're working between Lightroom and Camera Raw and maybe even other applications um, that need all that information. If you find you're, you're working between those applications a lot where you make changes in Lightroom and then you open up Adobe Bridge and then you look at that raw photo in Adobe Bridge and then go try to edit it in Photoshop. If you're doing that, then you probably want to turn the setting on 
because it'll write any changes you make in Lightroom to a little XMP file that can then be read by these other applications. Same thing goes for DNG. Even if you do DNG, it's not automatically writing it to the file until you force it to. So what I would say is, is it's not a, it's not an option for me. I don't really, I don't need that option to be on. Um, if you do go ahead and turn it on, just understand it will uh, impact Lightroom's performance. But if you're doing that type of work, you don't really have a choice. There's not really any other way to go around doing it. From there, let's go ahead and uh, go back over here, close this one up, head back to the menu, go to preferences. So we're gonna go to preferences and go all the way over to performance. One of the biggest things I can tell you that you're gonna see changes from is the graphics processor, okay? There's no one size fits all to this. I keep it on auto and for newer computers, that's probably the way to go. However, you might want to experiment if you're having problems. I had somebody email me the, the other day and they said whenever they switched to, lay, to the develop module, things hung up, it crashed, and it ended up when they changed their graphics card settings, everything worked. I think they even had to update the driver. Everything worked just fine. So just keep that in mind. Your graphics card can impact things. Uh, you definitely don't want this set to off if you have a newer computer because it'll slow things down. And if you have an older computer, then you might want to experiment with this. Adobe has a learn more. I would highly recommend clicking on that to learn a little bit more about it. And then also get comfortable with updating your graphics card drivers. Right. So depending on your computer, some people have to do it manually, some people don't. But uh, if you're one of the people that has to do it manual, chances are it's a, a, a Windows computer. Um, Apple pretty much takes care of that for us. You'll want to be comfortable with updating that. That is one of the biggest culprits I've seen to speed and to inconsistent glitches and weird things and crashes happening inside of Lightroom. The absolute, the biggest culprit. So if something weird's happening, come over here, check that graphics card area out, click on learn more to find more. Come down here to camera raw cache. Uh, Adobe has recommended that you can even change this to 20 gigabytes, okay? And where you'll see this is gonna be mostly inside the develop module when it comes to the speed of editing your photos. So you can change that up to 20 gigabytes and you'll be just fine. As we scroll down through here, another one you want to talk about here and develop enable hover preview of presets. So I'm going to turn it on because I believe it's on by default. I head over to my presets section. And I'm going to hover over things and you'll see how it automatically changes the photo. All right. That's basically the hover functionality that that was talking about. It changes the photo, shows you everything. Like all things, that takes up computer resources. So if you find your computer's running slow, if you try to hover over a preset and you see a little spinning wheel or something's taking a long time, you might wanna come turn that off and just click on a preset if you wanna use it and click undo if you want to change that. From there, we'll come down to optimize catalog. You'll always wanna optimize your catalog. If you back it up, uh, it'll often give you tips or, or a chance to do that, but uh, you can always come in here and manually optimize it. If you're using Lightroom every day, I would do this once a week. If you're using Lightroom once or twice a week, I would do it every month. Um, but optimize your catalog, you really can't do it too many times. So just put that as part of your to-dos or if you notice that Lightroom is running a little bit slow. Last thing is there's a little link at the bottom of this whole little window here. It says more performance tips. Click on it you will find some of the things I mentioned here and a lot more things inside of there. So if you're if Lightroom is running slow, in 2022, it should not be. If you're if you're if you're meeting the system requirements for it, Lightroom should not be slow, no matter how many photos you have in it. So click on that, and that'll give you a lot of things that you can start to troubleshoot. Let's close out of there, and we'll uh, take a look at one other thing while we're in develop, which is presets. I talked about them before, but good to minimize the number of presets that you have. Okay, presets all take up space in your computer and they take up resources and all these different things. So don't have presets that you don't need inside of there. If you bought one of those packs, I see them advertised all the time, you know, get, you know, 1400 presets all at 97% off for just $9.99. Um, you know, if you bought them and you installed them all, you could be slowing down your version of Lightroom. So it's always good to just get in there and, and reduce the number of any presets that you have in any program anywhere in the world. It, it's just a good idea to do. You won't find a cap on presets, so you, I'm not gonna give you a number that you can have because it doesn't exist. Just like photos, everybody always asks, how many photos can I have? Do I have to make more catalogs or whatever? You don't. Uh, there is no limit to the number of photos that you can have. Same thing with presets, but 
with presets, the less you have, uh, the smoother things will start to run inside of there. And when I say the less you have, if you've got 100 or 200 or even 300, I wouldn't worry much about it. But if you're getting up there toward five, six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand presets, that's when I would start to look at reducing some of them. A couple other things that can impact performance that some people don't think about. Number one, the number of things you have open on your computer. That will directly impact anything, no matter how fast of a computer you have. Lightroom and Photoshop and any image editing program is a huge resource hog. So close things down. I do it all the time. If I'm doing a lot of editing, I make sure I try to close down as many things as possible. Another thing is the computer screen. So if you've got a 4K, 5K computer screen, it takes a lot from your graphics card and your computer to output to that. Okay. You know where it gets even worse? If you've got two screens. So if you've got two of those screens sitting there, now your graphics card has to do even more to output to those screens. I'm not saying don't use two screens. I'm just saying be aware that if you are, that that is something that could affect your performance. And also when you're buying a new computer, you might want to look at graphics cards and getting the best graphics card possible if this is something that you're going to do. Another thing is if you're looking for a video to go watch next, I've got one on five tips that you probably, notice I said probably, didn't know inside of Lightroom Classic. Judging from the comments, uh, a lot of people agreed they didn't know them as well. So if you're looking for a video to go watch next, that's a perfect place to go.